the boss. He was slow to meet together, but he brought a decent jag coming in from country no one rode. The cowboys all took notice as he dropped into a spot, riding up to ease the other's load. No one made a comment, but they snickered to themselves as they eyed this new addition to the crew. But he was soon forgotten, with Shorty in their sortin'. The work they had was all that they could do. And when the work was over, the cut punched through a gate, the boys began to visit and to share. But the stranger held his distance, didn't join in with the others, as Shorty trotted out to meet him there. The boys took in to laughing about the stranger in his rig. A saddle that he rode was way too small. His brogan shoes and bibbers, the floppy holy hat, the jacket didn't seem to fit at all. A cotton rope, a bridle rein, a balin twine the other, headstall held together with a string. The mule he came a-riding on had seen some better days. His single spur had passed its time to sing. Shorty turned and headed back. The stranger rode away. The questions from the crew would fill a book. He said he owns this outfit and two more just as good and really can't afford the cowboy look. Oh, you got your blanket on. You're going to run off with your blanket on. Oh my goodness gracious, it's going to fall off and scare you here in a minute, but that's okay. <laughs> that was cute. Can do it again? Can do it again? <laughs> what is cowboy culture? It's the attitude, the way we live for those of us who have worked large numbers of, of cattle. It's something that you just, you acquire. And you'll see that in other cultures too. I'm sure you've run across people that you've known all your life and never met before. Uh, you know what that person can do just by watching him walk. In my world, you you go somewhere and, and see people move, you know that they've spent time on horseback. You know, if they were serious horse people, they've been, you, you can tell just by mm -hmm. the way they move, by their presence to the world. Have you always wanted to do that with your life? Like, ride horses? You know? Yeah. That's all I ever wanted to do is ride a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Never <laughs> yeah. had any... No, any I've done other things, but mm -hmm. all I ever wanted to do was ride a horse. You know, and, and I rode a lot of stuff when I was young, horses that nobody else wanted to ride. Be they lazy, be they old, be they Bronx. That's what was left in the corral, and if I wanted to ride, that's what I had to ride. And I rode a lot of that stuff. I got to where I could ride a bucking horse pretty handy. But there was a couple of those that was just wide open wrecks, you know. I had a horse put a foot in dog hole, and, you know, I slid away from that horse there. You know, I went to turn the steer and <clears throat> run out in that dog town, and we crashed. People wonder why I don't like prairie dogs. Well, that's that's a big reason right there, you know. <laughs> I don't like to fall down like that, you know. Yeah, that's all I ever wanted to do was, you know, punch cows and, and ride horses. and. As I got older, the cow jobs got harder to come by, and I mm -hmm. ended up just riding the horses, and that's pretty much what I do today. But my knowledge of that cow out there is pretty extensive because mm -hmm. I worked at it hard. You know, I roped a cow one time in Arizona and stopped her, and everything was just perfect. And uh, this cow was running way fast, and the Bay Mare course is fast. And uh, I reached and roped that cow and went to the horn and sat down and said, whoa, and that bay mare just buried her butt in that arena. And that cow literally floated out on the end of that rope. All four feet went out on one side and crashed back on her side. I mean, when, I, when we said, whoa, that cow stopped, you know, I didn't tell that cow to run that fast. But I taught that mare to stop that hard. It'd be kind of like riding or running by on your motorcycle and getting roped and tied to a parking meter. <laughs> you know, you hit the end of that rope, you're going to whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always enjoyed verse and, and have wrote for years and years. Uh, started writing poems when I was living in cow camps and, you know, too broke to do anything else and a thought would get in your mind and pretty quick you'd 
write it down, you know, put it in a book somewhere and then lose the book. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of poems were that away. I have written a lot of stuff that's uh, fairly heavy, that's, that's not that funny. And I've learned a lot of poems that just, they're, people don't, they'll, they'll make you cry. Uh, poems like uh, uh, Buck Ramsey's um, um, Bonnie Trina, where that first line starts out, uh, she was giving birth to her first child when Bonnie Trina died. That's not going to be a funny poem. That's not going to be humorous at the end. It's that way. I mean, you know, everything is going real good right now, and your horse trips, and you're bedbound. Circumstance is going to change things. You're not going to be able to do what you want to do. Horse fall, break your leg, you can't walk no more. And that's part of the culture that we live with, where I don't see that uh, in other cultures, you know, like where you are. It, it's more permanent. It, it's, things are smoother for you. They're not as drastic as they are for us. Life changes. You know, death is normal. It, it happens. It's going to happen to all of us sooner or later. Some of us hope it's more later than sooner, but, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. And I don't know why that I've been writing those kinds of poems, the, what I'm going to call the old man poems, okay? But you know, I've, I've learned a lot of <clears throat> old man poems in the last few years and, and have been writing that direction because I'm not young. I can't do today what I did 15 years ago. I learned <clears throat> when I was really, really young that you ride the horse that you were cutting. This is the horse I'm riding now. You know, I didn't, I didn't pull this horse out. This horse was given to me, and this is the horse I got to ride. It's just, <laughs> just the way it is. You know, being able to give it away. That's what teaching kids is all about. A chance to be able to help somebody else. Repaying a lot of those old men that taught me so much about cows. How was it that, that uh, what's his name, wrote in that poem? Um, it was a Christmas poem. He talked of a baby boy born in a cow shed, all swaddled in tatters and laid in a trough, who growing up, gave away all he could gather and taught us that what is not given is lost. Yeah, you are what you do. You are what you are. <laughs> <laughs>